Hello coaches, welcome back to another Modern Soccer Coach Breakdown. Today we're going to talk about shapes, but not in possession, out of possession. Today we're going to talk about shapes on the training pitch. What are the benefits of changing and adapting grid sizes and playing areas? What are some ideas to do this? And what are the long-term benefits of doing this over the course of a season? Before we start, please give it a like and a subscribe below. And if you enjoy the exercises, as always, please check out the ebooks on the link below, modernsoccercoach.com. There's a ton of information there, free stuff, ebooks, webinars. Please check it out. Okay, training shapes, let's go. So, most exercises are set up in a traditional way, just like a pitch is, rectangle shape, or if you're looking at a rondo, you see a lot of squares, 20 by 20, 10 by 10 areas. But before we look at the benefits of adapting and modifying that there, let's look at some ideas that you can change and why you might want to do that with your session design. So the first game we're going to look at is a 4v4 plus 4 in a diamond shape. So what this does is it clearly defines passing angles if you're playing a midfield diamond or if you're playing a midfield three and you're looking for the number nine to maybe drop in and help. It can give you different pictures in that. It also allows those supporting players on the outside, those yellow players, to be closer to their teammates. So again, distances and angles become important. And if the ball is turned over and the roles switch with teams, the transitions are intense from a decision-making point of view as well as a physical point of view. So this game is fast moving and again, details, body shape, passing angles all become really important and are emphasizing the design and not just with a coach telling the players that it's important. Another 4v4 plus 4 example is in a circle. This is from Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. Why would you use a circle? Well, your two outside players on each side could be centre-backs. Again, you could be using the midfield three with an inverted defender coming in to create the four. Or it could be for the players on the inside to find spaces either between the two purple players or in half spaces on either side of them as well. So again, it can be designed for players to solve problems with space or it can be designed to point players in the direction for the space where they might pick up a little pocket of space. Manchester City are brilliant at those positions. So it could be a variety of things, but a really good exercise for again, just changing the picture. Our next game is going to be a 3v3 plus 3 in a triangle. Again, similar to the diamond and the circle different passing angles different areas challenging players to find spaces but also in this one you've got the mini goals in the corners of the triangle so you can reward the defending team if they win the ball they can score right away or you can create a transitional game and reward the possession team if they use the plus three overload to get six seven passes and then they can score in any of the mini goals again the game moves quite quick challenges those supporting players to move around the triangle to try and find spaces and angles to help their teammates keep possession and move the ball our next shape is a type of hexagon shape as you can see here what you're trying to create is making those supporting players in yellow they could be again inverted or supporting fullbacks or sevens and elevens on the outside and again making that central space a little bit tighter because again in a game those spaces are limited and then from a defensive standpoint in the 5v3 plus 4 game the three defenders are replicating that midfield three that are looking to win the ball back so again just modifying a game to try and paint a picture of tactical situations that might happen in a game with angles and spaces. And then another example of a hexagon here. This is what uh, Thomas Tuchel has used in a pre-match session, a match day minus one session. If you want to see the full session, click on the link below. But this would be a hexagon type idea that he's used. He would have three teams of seven. He has six players on the outside in purple with one neutral in the middle and then 7v7 in the middle as well so there's an overload on the outside and you've also got a plus one in the middle again because of all the different angles you're challenging players with positions 
and you're also keeping those transitions intense because if a team loses the ball, they got to win it back quickly because the other team is circulating it and moving it with quite a big overload, a plus seven. It can be quite difficult to win that ball back, so you got to react really quickly, and it's a really, really good game to get everyone moving, and again, body shape and position become really important. And then the final idea is to use this in a warm-up, and I love this idea. Three colours in a square, and you can see how it's organised below. They start by playing the ball to one another, getting touches, getting angles. It's got to go in a certain order of the colours, and then you open it up to where it's vertical, and it's the same colour orders, but now they've got two players of each colour, and you've got three zones going, and again angles and movement becomes really really important and then the third variation is two games and it's like l-shaped playing area where it's three v three plus three and they can pass diagonally across so there's a bit of chaos here as well but you've got two playing areas where you're modifying the playing the shape and that can challenge players to find different passing angles different receiving angles and ranges of passing maybe it's a diagonal across which again adds a little bit to the exercise so there you have it coaches quite a few different ways that you can change the playing area and what that can do is a few different things so number one in every one of the videos was passing angles so challenging players to find those spaces challenging players to look at different passing angles traditional passing angles are sometimes difficult if the game is played in a rectangle you'll normally get players checking for the ball quite square but if you change the game to a triangle or a diamond you can change and modify those passing angles just by the game second of all is you can draw something out in an exercise and try to paint a picture that you see in the game and maybe replicate a situation so the one that we had with the hexagon where the inside channel was very small that there can be something that you're trying to show the players it can be more effective than maybe standing and explaining that to players going back to the circle game that Pep Guardiola's used again the two center backs and allowing them players to find those spaces it can be a little bit more deliberate and challenging for the players to solve those rather than playing in an 11v11, in a traditional 8v8 and, and trying to draw those situations out can be a little bit of a longer process. The third and final one which I find most interesting is this concept of differential learning which Tuchel has talked about before. It's a concept of just changing the environment every single day and sometimes when you have players with access to training three, four, five times a week doing the same exercises every single time although they can be really confident and competent in it sometimes they can disengage, it can become monotonous so even changing an exercise up from a rectangle or a square into a circle, into a triangle it can just add a different perspective on training and when you start to do that over the course of a season do you create higher levels of engagement in your sessions, in your environment, potentially? Thanks so much for watching, coaches. As always, before you go, please give it a like and a subscribe. And if you want to check out more training ideas, check out the ebooks on the link below, modernsoccercoach.com slash shop. And if you have a topic that you would like to have addressed for next week or the week after, we'll take a look at it. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Goodbye.